Hey everyone, it's Miriam with a Y from Miriam's Nature. I went to a different Dollar Tree this week and found these potentially fun cookie cutters. I strongly suspect that they're polypropylene, which means that they could be resin friendly. And if they are, then they will easily release if I use them as a mold. So, <laughs> I suspect that some of you are thinking, uh, Miriam, cookie cutters don't have a base. That's the point of them. So, um, they're not going to hold resin. Well, don't worry. I know that. But luckily, resin also doesn't like to stick to the sticky side of tape. Ironic, isn't it? So... What we're going to do is add a sticky base onto one of these and try and see if we have ourselves a viable, fun-shaped, inexpensive mold. Since these are wider than any packing tape or duct tape that I have, I'm going to have to butt up two strips of tape to form a base for any of these. Now, resin picks up every tiny, itsy-bitsy detail of any mold you use, so it'll pick up the line where the two pieces of tape meet, but we'll take care of that later on. So, I chose to do this with duct tape, and I cut myself two pieces and overlapped them, and the reason that I picked duct tape is the edge of this is really thin because, remember, this is designed to be a cookie cutter. So the surface area here is going to be really small, and I want the stickiest tape to grab onto this. So, and in order to do this, I also want to try to make this as flat as possible. And I'm literally just going to press it down onto the surface of the tape. And really press down nice and hard and I will flip it over and really burnish this down and make sure that it has made contact with as much of the surface as it possibly can and I'm even going to fold it over onto the edge just for a little added extra security <laughs> and I'm doing this because when I pour resin here, I want to minimize its ability to leak out. And I'm going to set this in a dish too, just in case there is a little bit of a leak. I don't want it running all over my floor. I'm still going to be super extra careful, but I'm pretty sure this is a tight enough hold. Okay, now I'm going to mix up some resin and we are going to play with our new mold. I was clear coating some other pieces with resin and had a little bit left over. So I thought instead of letting it go to waste, it could actually help me out in preventing any accidents here. If you have a taped bottom, putting a really thin layer of resin down first or even just along the inner edge and letting that partially cure before moving on to your main layer can really help. Why? Because if for some reason you have a leak where the tape isn't well attached, only a teeny tiny bit of resin would leak out rather than your entire project. And letting that small amount of resin semi-cure inside first ensures that any potential leak has been stopped up before you proceed with your true piece. Now, I don't know if I would mix up resin just to do this pre-layer for one small piece, but if you have other projects that can use some of the resin you'll be mixing up, it's a good idea. Or wait to do this first layer when you already have resin mixed up for something else too. Mixing tiny amounts of resin, like less than 15 milliliters, can invite problems like inaccurate measuring or improper curing, so I wouldn't do that. But if you've got some leftover, definitely worth doing. So what I'm going to do here is pour what I've got left over in here. And I'm going to pour it along the edge just in case I don't have enough to fill the entire first layer. But I think I do. And then all I'm going to do now is sort of move this so that it hits all the edges 
If it can form a complete layer at the bottom, that would be ideal. You can coax it along. And then once you get it over to the edge and you let it cure there, then you can pour confidently knowing that there is no leak to worry about. I managed to get a good thin layer along the entire bottom. So what I'm going to just do now is let it self-level. Check for bubbles first, maybe if bubbles are a concern. And then cover this up, let it cure a couple hours, and then we'll proceed. To test these possible molds, the cookie cutters, I used my favorite resin, which is Clearcast 7050. I'm not fond of having to wear a mask or a respirator, especially if I'm going to be doing a video. So I love that I don't have to worry about that sort of thing when I work with this resin. And if these possible molds work, the test that I did today, I'd like to have it cure rock hard, and I know that Clearcast will do that for me. So if you're thinking of working with resin, I highly recommend this. I'm also going to be adding some dry uh, mica. This is a sparkly white, and I ordered this online. I'll put links for that below. And I'm going to use some uh, iridescent glitter flakes. And I use Martha Stewart glitter because it never bleeds into the resin. And I'm purposefully using two dry items to color my resin because I want the resin to be as strong as possible once it cures. If I add something like ink or acrylic paint to color the resin, which is fine to do, the resin loses some of its heat resistance and possibly some of its uh, strength too, just a little bit. But given that I might want to use this as a, as a coaster, I want it to be as strong as possible. Already mixed up my resin and now I'm just adding some flakes. We'll mix those in. And now a little bit of sparkly mica and we'll mix that in too. Now I purposefully let my resin cure a teeny bit. If it was at its most liquid state, the glitter would all sink to the bottom. But if it's kind of thickened up a little bit, it'll say nicely suspended throughout. I've let this thin layer cure for a couple of hours. It's still a little soft and a little tacky to the touch, but it has cured enough not to leak out even if there was a hole, which luckily there wasn't. This being a bit sticky, it's an ideal time to add a new layer of resin because the new layer will chemically fuse with this layer as if everything had been poured all at once. This is the strongest type of bond epoxy resin can make. The other type of bond is what's called a mechanical bond. That's where the resin grips onto what it's being poured on, but could theoretically be pried off with a little bit of effort. And we don't want that. Now, had I let this resin cure completely, this thin layer in here, the best thing to do to ensure a strong mechanical bond would be to sand it or scratch it up a little bit to give it some tooth for the new layer to more permanently grab onto it. Even though, only mechanically, it would still be a really good grab. I'm gonna pour it in in the center and let it work its way out to the edges. I'm just gonna tilt it a little bit to all the edges and we'll cover this up and let it cure completely this time, about 24 hours. This resin sets up pretty nicely after eight hours, but I want it to be pretty darn hard. Since I'm probably gonna be adding something on top, I'm not so concerned about bubbles, but if I was, and if you are, then I would torch at this point. The heat of the torch being passed over the resin causes any bubbles that may have formed and risen to the top to pop. That then leaves you with a nice glass-like top finish. Okay, so it's been just about 20 hours. The resin is definitely cured. Enough to demold if I can. Now, of course, you guys already know whether or not this worked based on the title of the video and the cover picture, but at this moment for me, I have no idea. So you're 
witnessing me finding out. Okay, the first step, I'm going to pull off the duct tape. First, I want to show you what happened. As I was folding the sort of little corners of the tape down over the cookie cutter, I sort of buckled the tape a little bit, and that thin layer of resin that I had poured in initially sort of took on the wave of the tape because it wasn't heavy enough to push that tape back down flat. So when I pull this off, the back of the resin is going to be wavy just like this, but no big deal. So I'm going to start by peeling back on the duct tape to pull the tape off. And ooh, I can already tell that it's going to work because as I'm pulling on the tape, it's sort of popped free of the cookie cutter a little bit. Woohoo! And interestingly, the tape is still sticky. It's like I never used it. It's still fully sticky. And the resin has no impact on it. I don't understand why that is, but that's the way it works. Okay, so, like I said, the re resin took on that wave. And it also, I don't know if you can see it, has the texture of the duct tape. You know, the little ridges of the duct tape. And there's also the line from where the two pieces of duct tape met up. Now, I have to see if we can pop it out. And that was super easy. Okay. <laughs> I didn't even try very hard. So, the cookie cutter totally works as a mold. And I am pretty confident now in saying that this is polypropylene. This side is nice and shiny, but due to capillary action, has slightly raised edges where the then liquid resin climbed up the sides of the cookie cutter a bit. You have the option of sanding down this raised edge evenly and leaving a contrasting matte border around your piece, which can be a fun look, or instead top it off with a clear or decorative coat of resin. And that's what I'm going to do. I've gone ahead and mixed up a small batch of resin enough to make a well-measured mix and mix a couple of colors. I'm going to use these perfect pearls. And I've also propped up our flower so that I can pour a new layer on top here and not have to worry about it sticking to the base. And if you saw my last video, you know that my way of mixing colors is to do it in tiny Ziploc bags. So I've added a little bit of Sunflower Sparkle to this bag and a little bit of blush to this bag. And now I'm going to add a little bit of resin to each of the bags and mush it all up. To minimize any accidents, I am using a pipette to get my small amount of resin into the Ziploc bag. And do the same for the blush. And now I seal the bag. Hold on to the seal and just mush the mica around in the resin. And this gives me a uniformly mixed resin and I have it in a nice little bag, and when I cut off a little end, I'll be able to use this almost like a cake decorating tool. And I'm going to do the same for this small amount of yellow. And now I'm just going to cut a tiny little corner off the bag, and start using this to pour my resin around the edge. And I want to make sure I coax it over to the edge. And then maybe bring in some toward the middle. And now I'm going to pour some clear And I'm going to mix a little bit of that in with the pink. 
just to feather the edge a little bit. Now, some of you are thinking I have a plan. I don't. <laughs> I'm really just making this up as I go along. My thought on this is to have sort of a pearly top with sort of peaks into a sparkly bottom to give it like a 3D look. We'll see how that works out. And cut the little tip off this bag. So I'm just pouring some of the yellow and letting it disperse. And now the resin is pushing outward. Because I've added resin to the middle, it wants to self-level, and in order to do that, it needs to push in all directions that way. So it will eventually become as flat as it can. And I think a little yellow back in the center again so that I will feather out again. We will let this cure and take a look at it tomorrow. Another 24 hours has passed. The top layer is fully cured, beautifully level, bubble free after having been quickly torched. And it passes what I call my fingernail test, meaning I can't make a dent in it no matter how hard I press with my nail. The yellow mica spread and settled more than I was expecting, so in the future, I'll add it when the resin has cured a little bit more so that it's less fluid and the mica is better suspended in it. To deal with the waviness on the back, I think I'm just going to hot glue a piece of felt and it'll never be seen. Or if I choose to use this as a sun catcher instead, I can always add another layer of resin here too. Another option is to add a darker piece of felt. I think that lets you see some of the sparkle more, so I may go that route. For fun, I tried another one of the molds, and in this one I did alcohol ink um, and resin, and I used cheap packing tape for the back. I mean like really cheap, ripply stuff. And I didn't even bother folding it over. This time I just let it be flat. So it's got some of the ripple and clear coating this will take care of that. But now I think I'll pop it out with you guys here. This one's a little trickier because of the shape, but still came out pretty well. It's got that raised lip to easily adjust, but any mold would do that. These cookie cutters have a lot of potential for sun catchers, coasters, ornaments, and more. So what do you think? Let me know with a thumbs up. Tell me if you'd like to see more mold ideas or about ideas you might have that can help everyone. Let me know if you'd like to see how I fluid painted the star in the mold with alcohol inks. Check the video description box for extra info and sources for supplies. I super appreciate the help you're all giving this channel by using the Amazon links to access Amazon. And as always, you're watching and subscribing. Go check out some resin, explore the channel, and let your creative nature shine. See you next time. Bye now.